So. So. Hey, coffee shop nomads. Hello. I'm here with Jan Wong. Mm -hmm. Okay, Jan Wong uh, at Copenhagen Coffee in Kuala Lumpur. So, your your Instagram profile says uh, you founded Open Minds. Mm -hmm. I was like, that sounds cool. Uh, you're in Forbes 30 Under 30 Asia 2017. Mm -hmm. um, TEDx speaker, part time lecturer, uh, and then you had Travels Architecture Cafe. Mm -hmm. It's like, gosh, it's a moment. <laughs> Sounds like he's been starting businesses since he was 17. Mm -hmm. So I really liked your story of how you started your first business. Can you share that? Sure. So, 17, I, I just entered college. Uh, as per every struggling teen, late teenager, I didn't come from a, a wealthy family. Uh, so I, I really wanted to find a way to uh, get a couple of bucks, uh, earn some money, so that I can have a proper student life, uh, so to speak. Uh, so I started looking around and what I could find back then were really the odd part-time jobs. Uh, distributing flyers, doing errands, uh, doing washing dishes in a restaurant maybe and I thought that hey, th these are the things that perhaps wouldn't contribute too much uh, to my future career although I pretty much don't know what I was heading towards back then but I thought yeah okay sure maybe I should try writing something on my own so I looked around and I was doing my IT degree and I thought okay maybe I should do something IT and back then I had this dream that it would be very cool to open a shop uh, really selling computer parts, you know, the, the hard drives, the, the monitor screen. Sounds really geeky, I know, but uh, th that was the dream uh, back then. But uh, as every business goes through, capital is a problem, especially to have a shop, uh, the rental, hiring somebody, getting the hardware. So I thought to myself, what can I do to get there, uh, but yet does not require me to have that sum for capital? I thought, okay, maybe servicing would make sense right. because uh, servicing. I can just do it off my time, right? So I looked around and said, okay, maybe I should start formatting PCs. So the interesting thing, uh, I don't know whether my, my past clients or my friends back then would kill me for saying this, but I, I know nothing about formatting PCs, <laughs> right? So I, I just thought it would be a cool idea. It doesn't cost me money, it just cost me time. So what I did was I, I traded my services for really just merely five, five bucks, five ringgit, right? So that's less oh, than wow. one US dollar, you know? Yeah, back then, yeah. So. Uh, I was just doing that with my friends, so it started off with my classmates, I was just going, th th there's a benefit here, right? So I was in IT school, so basically everybody has laptops, oh, right? Nice. So all I needed to do was go around, hey, your laptop looks a bit slow, you know, do you want me to speed things up for you, I can clean it up, I just charge you five bucks, mm. Let, let's do this. Uh, and uh, some good friends uh, trusted me, mm. so what I got was I took the laptop back and said, okay, so, now what? Uh, fortunately, there was a good friend uh, by the name of YouTube, uh, that basically taught me everything I had to know about formatting pieces. So I experimented with one, and then I got the two, and then three. Uh, eventually, this grew to become a, a business in, in itself, uh, and I grew beyond my class. Uh, there were my senior classes coming in. Eventually, people knew me for a guy that formats pieces uh, on campus. So, so that's how it really started off. I think one of the most interesting things here is that uh, when I was doing this back then, I didn't even imagine that I was doing a business. It was only much later that it struck me that, hey, actually this is a business. Oh my gosh, <laughs> that's so funny. I love that you started with YouTube. Well, I love that you get the laptop and then you're like, now let's figure out how to What's do next, this right? Yeah, 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 yeah. The resources that's available right now, yeah. it's, they make things so easy. Yeah, I have friends that uh, are web developers, web yeah. designers, that, have never, that don't have a formal degree in yeah. it. It's mm -hmm. really just YouTube, Udemy, and whatever else that they use. Totally. Yeah. yeah. I know programmers. Exactly. And it yes. works. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So that was your first business. Um, then how did it progress from there? So what happened was that from that first business, uh, the, the first business stuck with me for actually about eight years. So it stuck for, with me for quite a bit. But in between, I got curious. So I tried many other things. Uh, in between. So while that was my focus back then, from formatting PCs, I became the, the thumb drive seller, right? Thumb so, drive? Uh, oh, thumb drive. USB drives, oh, gotcha. right? So I started selling, trading USB drives in, in the same college I was in. Yeah. Eventually, that grew into hard drives to PCs and, and all of that. Uh, and then eventually, uh, this entire business model changed hmm. from the dream actually changed from opening the hardware shop, it became a data recovery center. 
uh, simply because uh, back then I knew nothing about business, really, I knew nothing. So, I, yes, I, I s mentioned that I wanted to start this shop, but I had no idea what, what it was entailed. It was just this dream, I just thought it was cool. Uh, but when, until I began to got serious and said, hey, maybe I should really open a shop, and I studied the feasibility of it, it just didn't make sense. So that's where it pivoted. I went to data recovery, it was a very niche business back then. Uh, and it was quite fun. We actually managed to attract the attention of one of the biggest data recovery providers globally based in the US. Wow. So I received this phone call. I honestly thought it was a scam. Yeah, but uh, it turned out very well. It was a, the company was legit. The representatives were real. They were looking for a reputable data recovery company uh, in to represent them in Asia. Wow. And they said that they found me. I was like, okay, yeah, we are reputable, yes. Wow. <laughs> And, so, and, and, that, and it grew. But like I said, in between, I, while working on that, I experimented in different companies. Uh, there's yeah. a Facebook app development company, there's a fashion-based company. I ran uh, oh. events. Yeah, don't look like it, but fashion, yeah, I, I know. Uh, I went to events and so on. I like that. Um, I've talked to other entrepreneurs who actually Almost all of them mm -hmm. have done like a bunch of different things. <laughs> yeah. like, I think it's us, nature. Yeah, yeah, none of us were just like, there's like one girl I can think of who's like, yeah, this is what I want to do. But everyone else is just like, yeah. <laughs> Trying a little bit here and there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Uh -huh. That's funny. Um, cool. And then right now you have Open Mind. Yes. Um, and that is a marketing service? Yes, that's right. So it's a marketing technology company. Marketing technology. Yeah, but leading towards Open Minds is quite interesting. When I started speaking to potential investors or people to come on board to assist me on this, uh, they seem more interested with my marketing plan oh. than the business itself. Interesting. So I, was, I think I spoke to maybe 10 to 20 people and most of them I said, hey, you know, why don't you come and help me with marketing? Like, nope, I'm, I want people to help me with that tech startup idea, I think this is cool, you know, but everyone I go to keeps telling me that, you know, just help me marketing, help me marketing. So I thought, okay, maybe I should just help people marketing. And, and that, that kind of built towards uh, the birth of Open Minds. And so you guys serve uh, all over Asia? You said you have three offices? Yes, three offices. Yeah. So uh, here in Malaysia, mm -hmm. uh, one, Singapore is really new, we are about only a year over there. Wow. Uh, and in Hong Kong, two years. We were talking about um, Kind of like remote partnerships or um, working with people in different places and mm -hmm. Jim brought up that he had a business partner who he's to this day never met mm -hmm. in fact never even heard his voice mm -hmm. um, so can you share 100%. that story so it is it's quite funny and I, I i to be honest when i look back I, I can't believe what actually happened right so basically uh, back then i was quite uh, active on twitter so this guy as well so we've been sending tweets, I've been exchanging tweets. In fact, I think I first met him, but it was in a, what we call a tweet chat, right? So basically, there's a specific time of a day where different people will just have a specific topic to talk about, and that was a digital marketing topic uh, that everybody just starts talking using these hashtags, and he was one of the participants. Uh, so he was engaging, I was engaging, and then uh, one day, we, we, we grew a little bit closer. So we, from open tweets, we went into DMs, and we thought, hey, you know, there's this idea, you know, once you start this Facebook app development company, he was a, he was a programmer, very good at that. So yeah, okay, let, let's do something. Uh, and things got serious. Uh, we, we decided that we we're going to start a private limited company. We had documents that need to be filled. So we were sending documents uh, from Australia to Malaysia. We we're just exchanging signatures. We started a bank account and, and we ran. And every conversation, like really every conversation was either through a tweet, or an email. Wow. Uh, that's it. Right? Not even WhatsApp, uh, <laughs> not even a Facebook group. It was really just email and tweets. That's I so don't crazy. know how we did it, but uh, the business ran for about two years, 100% remote. Wow. And yeah. Wow. And it was always just you two? Did you guys hire anyone? Uh, we had a small Malaysian team over oh, here. You had a whole team? Yeah, so okay. it's based in Malaysia. So it's always referred to yeah, the Australian partner, you know. Wow. And we have discussed this. Uh, and everybody thought that we are good friends or something. Yeah, yeah. yeah I guess we are close, but <laughs> on Twitter. So wow. if he's not as how his profile photo depicts it to be, I really wouldn't know. Could be a woman. Yeah, I, I really wouldn't know. 
but but it's possible, right? Yeah. I think th that's exactly where is it? How is it interesting? I mean, uh, the world is so big yet so small with technology, and yeah. Back then, we used to joke, you know, this one tweet changed how everything is. Mm. What on YouTube? 